Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So this is not the problem we're going to be solving. This is actually what I was working on before I started uh, today's daily leak code problem. I'll be launching this maybe by tomorrow. Looking forward to that. But today we're solving minimum penalty for a shop. We're given a list of customer logs. And that is going to be in the form of an array of strings where each string is either going to be an N or a Y. So we might have something like this. An N means that there were no customers that visited at that hour. And of course, this is an array, so it's going to be zero index. And we're going to use I to refer to each index. And a Y, of course, as you can imagine, is yes, there were some customers. So it's binary. It's either a yes or no. That makes things simple for us. But the rest of the problem isn't super simple because we are trying to choose some pointer J. And it can be any time from the beginning up until the end of the array, but also equal to n. That's a really easy edge case to miss. So if you missed that edge case, consider like in the future trying to really carefully read through the problem. That's really important to do. So that means that our j pointer actually could be here. It could technically be out of bounds. And this is the pointer that we're going to return. It's going to be our result. Now, what does this pointer represent? It represents what is going to be the closing time for the restaurant. Well, which closing time should we choose? We have in this case, six choices, like all the way up until out of bounds. So how do we know which spot to pick? Well, hypothetically, if we choose this spot over here, there's gonna be some penalty associated with that. Like every single closing time is going to have some penalty associated with it. We want to return the pointer J such that we close at the time that minimizes the penalty. So we're trying to minimize the penalty. Now, if there is a tie, suppose that like these two spots, there's the exact same penalty for both of these spots, then we are going to choose the one that comes earlier in the array. That's a pretty easy case to handle. I'll show you how we're going to do that in the code. Okay, so now how exactly do we calculate the penalty? Well, it took me a little bit to understand this and it's best understood with an example. So in the future, if you are kind of rereading the same question over and over again and you don't quite understand what it means, I highly encourage you to look at the example or even try to run an example yourself, see what you can kind of think of. We're going to count all the ends that came before this pointer because what they tell us is for every hour when the shop is open and no customers come n means no customers come the penalty increases by one so it's pretty easy to do if our j pointer is here let's just count all the ends before that j pointer in this case we have a single n and also they tell us for every hour when the shop is closed and the customers come the penalty increases by one when the customers come that is represented with a Y, remember? And when we close the shop at pointer J, the shop is closed at this pointer and every position after that. So we have to count all of the Ys in this section of the array. We have two of them here, so we get that count too. So if we were to close at this time, the total penalty would be three. So you can kind of see that for any arbitrary position, any arbitrary closing time, we kind of have to scan through the entire array to count that. And we could do it for every single position, but that's going to be big O of N squared. Is there a way we can speed this up? Yes, because kind of what I drew out here was basically a prefix sum on this side and a postfix sum on this side. Remember, a prefix sum is a sum starting at the beginning of the array. And we know what are we counting from the beginning of the array? We're counting the ends. From the end of the array, we have postfix. We're counting the y's on this side. So if we do some pre computation, we do some pre processing and we store the prefixes and the postfixes, then it will be really, really easy to calculate the penalty penalty in every single spot. Now it is going to take extra memory. We're going to need big O of N memory, but we're going to be able to then solve the problem in big O of N time. And I think it's quickly worth mentioning the edge case of when we're all the way at the end. In that case, what do you think we should do? Well, we'd get the prefix sum of all the ends here. There's two of them. 
and we'd get the postfix sum of everything here and to the right, but clearly there's no y's here and to the right. So that's always gonna be zero in the postfix array. Now I wanna quickly mention there is a better solution. There is a solution with O of one extra memory. And my solution I'm gonna show you is actually gonna need three loops. So it's possible to speed this up into a one loop solution, but I think that solution is overly complicated and I think it's not even intuitive. Like you would almost certainly come up with this solution first. So I'm just going to focus on this solution because I don't want to make this video like an hour long or anything like that. If you're interested, maybe you can leave a comment and I'll try to get to that and try to explain like the more complicated solution. But I'll quickly show you like a visual explanation of how we're going to do this. So one is going to be the prefix array counting the n. So I'm going to call that pre underscore n. That's kind of hard to read. So I'll rewrite it. And this one is going to be postfix y. And remember, when we said prefix n, we meant like if we're at this position, we're counting all the n's to the left of it. So when we start at this position, it's always going to be zero because there aren't any n's to the left of it. Now, when we get here, we have a prefix of one. So we put one here. Now, when we get here, we have previously we had a prefix of one. And if this is an n, we're going to add one to this value. But this is not an n. So we don't add anything. We just put a one over here again. Now, in this position, there's an n here. So we say one plus the previous value, which is one here. So then we get a two here. Now, the rest of these, we don't have any n's anymore. So for here, it's not an n. We just reuse this value two. And then once again, we reuse the value two here. Now, postfix is slightly different. We're going to start at the end of the array and work our way backwards. And remember, this value is always going to be zero, just like this value is always going to be zero because there aren't any y's. There's nothing there in the array. But when we get here, we are actually going to include this in the result in this position, because when we're counting the postfixes, actually, like if our J pointer was here, we would include the value at the current J pointer. But for prefixes, we don't. We take everything to the left of that. So here we're going to get a one. Now, once again, we have a Y. So we say one plus one, we get a two here. Here, there's an N. So we don't add anything to the previous value. We have two. Here, there's a Y. So we say two plus one, and then we get a three here. Here, there's an N. We just reuse the previous value. Once you've done this, you've pretty much solved the problem because now for every position, including this one, we can easily calculate the penalty and of course return the index of the minimum penalty. I'll show you quickly how to do that. For this position in the result, we want to know how many n's come before this position. That's going to be zero. So we put zero here and how many y's come to the right of this position. That's going to be three, right? One, two, three. That's why we counted it here. So we, you take those two values, add them up. You're going to get three. You're going to do that for every single pair of values Four, and this is three. This is four, this is three, and this is two. So the best time to close would be this time because the penalty in that case is going to be two. That's the minimum penalty of all of these. It's going to be two because there were two hours, there were two positions in the array where there were no customers. And there were three times where there were customers. If we were to close at any of these other times, we would probably miss these customers. So that's kind of why we want to close at the end. End. Hypothetically, if there was a tie, like hypothetically, if this was also a three, which one do you think we should return? Probably this one. Like they specifically tell us that somewhere here. They tell us we should return the earliest hour at which the shop must be closed with a minimum penalty. So we would return a J equals zero in that case. So this is what I'm going to code up. Conceptually, it's not super bad at least like once you kind of know prefixes and postfixes. And I definitely think it's more simple than the other solution, at least to understand it. Okay, so now let's code it up. And I do want to mention that the code for this is actually going to be longer than the other solution. But I think at least you would have a chance of coming up with this solution. The other solution is a bit more complicated. It's a lot more clever, though the code is shorter. Now, like I said, we're going to be computing the prefixes 
as well as the post fixes. Initially, we're going to uh, create this array and it's going to be of the length of the input array plus one, just like I showed in the drawing. And we're also going to have the post fixes, which count the Y's. And that's going to be the same size, just like this. Now, remember, prefixes are non inclusive. So when we start our I pointer from the beginning to the end, we're not just going to put N plus one. We're actually going to start at index one because as I showed earlier, index zero is always going to be a zero anyway. And this way, we're actually going to avoid the out of bounds error. So we can say that the prefix value at index I is going to be the same as the one at index I minus one. We're not going to get an out of bounds error because of this. Now, the only reason we would increment this, we would have like a plus one here is if the customer or whatever like this character is, is equal to n because remember prefix n that's what we're counting here i'm trying to make the variable simple because this is not like a, a super straightforward thing to code up like there are a lot of edge cases that you can miss trust me i missed them the first time i tried coding it up and if this is the case we're going to go ahead and just increment this by one and it's that simple we're going to do something very similar for postfix but as I showed, that's going to go in the opposite direction. So index N would be the last position in this array. That would be the N plus one position or the last position, because remember, the arrays are zero indexed. But if we want to skip the last position, we will actually start at N minus one, because we know the last position for the postfix array is always going to be a zero anyway. And once again, this way, we are going to avoid the out of bounds error. Now in Python, uh, you iterate in reverse a little bit weird. Uh, you have this. So this means we're going to stop at zero and we're going to decrement by uh, one each time. But the rest of this is going to be pretty simple. So I'll kind of I guess I won't copy and paste it. I'll just say postfix of Y at this index is going to be the same as postfix of y at i plus one, not i minus one, because remember, we're working our way in the opposite direction. This is technically the previous value because we're going in the opposite direction. And if the customer at this is equal to y, make sure you have a capital Y, by the way, and a capital N. If that's the case, then we're going to take this guy and increment it by one. So now that we've done all the hard work, our solution is pretty much complete, to be honest. I'll uh, make a little space here. We're going to keep track of two variables. What's the minimum penalty so far? I'm going to initialize that to a really big number because we're trying to minimize it. And I'm also going to have index. That's going to be our result. I'm naming it index just to uh, make it a bit more descriptive. But initially, that's going to be zero. And we're always going to end up assigning this like the first iteration of the loop, we're going to find, well, I guess I'll just write it out and show it to you and then explain it afterwards. But we're going to now iterate through the array, we can actually go in either direction. So I'm going to start from the beginning and we're going to do n plus one, because technically we are allowed to close at n. And this loop is non inclusive, this will go from i equals zero, all the way up until i equals n. So now how do we calculate the current penalty. Well, like I said, it's really, really easy. Now that we've done the pre computation, we're going to take the prefix at I add it with the post fix at I as well. And if this penalty is less than the current penalty, then we will not only update the minimum penalty, well, not current penalty, I probably should have put a minimum penalty there. Sorry, I'm a little sloppy. If that's the case, we'll update the minimal penalty to this and we'll take our index and set it to i. That's the important part because this is actually what we're going to return. So uh, out here now, I'm going to go ahead and say return the index. That's the entire code. Yes, it's three loops. Yes, we need extra memory, but at least this is the type of thing that you could come up with your, by yourself in a real interview, at least now that you kind of know how like prefixes and postfix work. Now let's run it to make sure that it works. Whoops. And of course I had a bug, even though I talked about this in the drawing explanation, I still messed it up. That kind of shows you that you do have to be careful. Now, what did we do wrong here? Well, remember, we're going up until the end of the array in this case. But when it came to prefixes, we're not concerned about the current customer. We're concerned for this prefix at index I, we only care about the customers to the left 
of the index. So here we really want to say I minus one. And there's another really sloppy typo here. You can see I have an N for some reason. I would guess I was trying to go too fast today. I really apologize about that. But now let's go ahead and run it. And as you can see, it works. It's pretty efficient, at least in terms of the big O runtime, though it does take a bit extra memory than you would need for the optimal solution. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Got some cool features coming, and I'll see you soon.